I'm Lindsay. Um, this is about take 20 for my first uh, art, vlog, tutorial, whatever we want to call it. I'm gonna spare you all the chit chat from the previous takes and get right into it. So I have a problem. My problem is this painting that I did recently. It did not turn out the way I had intended. It looks great, just not what I wanted. It was supposed to be much lighter with some white space in there, but um, it just turned out really dark. It really got away from me. My issue is that I have some other paintings that I'm going to do that are going to be part of a series. And when I'm doing a series of paintings, I want each painting to have the same stylistic approach, the same inking and painting techniques. What this painting made me realize is that I don't have a game plan when it comes to my paintings. I might have a general uh, color palette in mind, but in terms of my technique, I don't have a plan. And the only way I'm gonna figure that out is if I experiment some more. What I thought I would do and what I thought might be great to record me doing is to redo this painting several times over using different techniques so that I can finally decide what my approach is going to be. For the purpose of this experiment, I have simplified the line art of my original piece, printed it out at a smaller size, and now I have transferred it onto some watercolor paper. And what I'm going to do is ink and paint this at least four different times using at least colored pencil, a couple different ballpoint pens, and India ink with brushes. Now that I have the first line art transferred onto paper, I'm going to go ahead and start inking. For this piece, I'm going to be using a Uniball Signo ballpoint pen. This is, I believe, the micro size. And by the way, I do have this line art available for purchase on my Gumroad. You can download the line art and just print it on your inkjet printer and you can transfer it onto your own paper and follow along at home. You could also paint digitally if you prefer. Also, before I begin, I would like to add that I have fallen in love with a kind of folksy inking style where artists don't try to achieve perfect, smooth lines where they actually, I don't know, it looks like they're purposely letting the lines be kind of wobbly, maybe having a light hand. And I kind of have issues with being a perfectionist, so I want to try doing that. I think it's really charming anyway. As you can see, I'm just holding the pen really lightly and moving slowly. If you want to get smooth lines, you actually have to ink quite fast and use your whole arm. Also, I'm working on cold press paper right now which is definitely helping with the wobbly lines because cold press paper is actually quite uh, bumpy and rough. So now I'm kind of on purpose moving the pen in and out a little. I like how this is looking so far.
the image inked on my watercolor paper and I have my paint set up and my brushes out. But first, I wanted to give you this important little pro tip. Even though a lot of pens say that they're waterproof, I have found that sometimes what will happen is some of the ink will absorb into the paper, but some of it will sit on top. And when you go over the lines with water, a little bit of it will run, which isn't always a big deal depending on what you're doing, but if you don't want to risk any excess ink running on the page, then what you need to do is just take a gummy eraser and just pat down on your line work. If your charcoal transfer was light enough, then the gum eraser is also going to remove the charcoal or your pencil lines. I like to pat first. And then once I've patted down all the line work, I will gently erase any stubborn pencil lines that didn't come up. actually see her eye and eyebrow here. So it's a good thing that I press down. This is why you want to press and lift before you start swiping with your eraser. And I just wanted to show a close-up of the line work. This is pretty fun. I intentionally went wobbly with the lines, which I quite like. What I noticed was when I held the pen really lightly, as it went over the bumps in the cold pressed paper, I would end up with some gaps in the line. And I actually like that. Now for the part everyone has been waiting for, I'm about to start painting. I know people are gonna be asking me what are the supplies I use, so I'm gonna just go over that real quick. The paper is Canson Montval. This is a watercolor block. It's cold press, 140 pounds. This is, honestly, this is not my favorite paper. I bought this a few years ago when I started seriously doing watercolor and needed a paper to practice on, but I bought so much of it. I had so much of it left over. So I thought for these experiments, I'm going to just use my cheap paper. Normally I don't even like cold press paper because I'm usually going for smooth line work. However, in this case, the cold press really helped me to loosen up, let go and have a more fun organic lines. So maybe I might be using more cold press in the future. For paint brushes, my two favorite brands, which I'm sure you've seen all over YouTube, the Silver Black Velvet and the Princeton Neptune. I usually go for the Princeton Neptune brushes because they have this flatter tip, whereas the Black Velvet has a more pointy tip, which is great if you're doing line work in your painting where you're switching from thin to thick, but usually I'm just doing large, broad washes of color, so the fine tip just gets in my way. In terms of the water absorbency of the brushes, they're both about equal. They will both hold a lot of water and therefore a lot of paint in their bristles. For the watercolor itself, I am going to be using and in Danthrene Blue by Da Vinci Watercolors, a phthalo blue from Daniel Smith. I also have a Paraline Green from Da Vinci. I have I actually have an, a Viridian from an old Cotton tube from college. I'm finally just trying to use up my Cottonins. They're not so bad when you know what you're doing. Then I also have a Paraline Maroon from Da Vinci Paints and a Quinacridone Pink from Daniel Smith. I should also note that all of these watercolors have really high staining properties. I come to find that I really like layering watercolors and I never want to lift the watercolor, so I try to find the most staining pigments that I can. Uh, 
gummy racer trick didn't work as well as I thought. Maybe it's the Montval paper. I'm not sure what the issue is, but I've definitely used this pen when inking before and didn't have this much trouble with the ink running. And you know what, it's gonna be okay because this is gonna be completely filled with color. of plans. I am having some issue with the ink running, which is okay. I forgot how much this Montval paper warps and it lets, it kind of helped push some of the water outside the lines. So actually I think I'm going to go a little more uh, messy with this piece. this whole thing is going to be a little bit gray. So I think I'm actually just going to wet the entire paper. This paper is actually 9 by 12 inches, but I'm going to be cropping it to an 8 by 10 when I'm done. So actually don't worry about the bit of green on the edge here. Okay, now that I have this layer of water down, um, I'm going to start laying in some color. I like having some of the color run into different areas, and then when it's dry, I can go back in and layer on darker, more saturated color. Because the paper is warping and because I've used so much water, the paint is now moving with gravity. This is why I actually normally don't like uh, working with these watercolor blocks because Usually the paper in watercolor blocks is only 140 pound and so it ends up warping easily and I like to use a lot of water. But actually now this is getting kind of cool effect. This is getting really moody. reason why I am doing this. The painting is already going in a totally different direction from what I planned. It's okay because this is experimentation time. I want a little more white so while the paper is still wet I'm just going to take a paper towel and dab away. I know this kind of looks like a tie-dye right now. Okay um, I think I've salvaged this so far. It's taken on kind of a dreamy quality. That is a quality that I would like to put into my artwork more often. All right, so I let the painting dry, um, but it still had a lot of warping. So I put it under a book and I taped it down. Taping does only so much for uh, preventing warping, what you really have to do is stretch the paper, which is a whole nother thing I can get into in the future if you are interested. 
think there might be some missing video footage. If that's the case, I'm really sorry. Let me explain what I did. I put a light wash over the flowers and I was going to fill in the woman with a mix of green and blue, but then I thought, well, I was thinking about how I wasn't leaving enough white space in here besides outside the figure. And then it occurred to me that actually maybe I should leave her as is. She is a wallflower. She is trying to hide. So maybe I just leave her the same color as the paper. And then what I decided to do was just even out some of the, the blue that was blended in here. I started to get some nice blooms in here. This is one advantage to the Montval paper. It is much easier to get blooms. There was a time when I hated blooms and I would try very hard not to get them. And then when I started using more expensive paper, it's actually very easy to get smooth washes on a heavier 100% cotton paper, but it's super hard to get blooms on the expensive paper. So if you want blooms, the cheaper paper can actually be much easier. And actually the warping can help with the pooling of the water and uh, getting that effect. So I I'm getting pretty happy with this. There isn't as much saturation of color as I wanted. So I think I'm going to add in some watercolor in a kind of airbrush way to add in some spots of red. I think also bleeding over into the figure to help her hide with the background. And then I think I'll leave it as is. I'm actually pretty happy with this so far. So yeah, this was a lot of happy accidents and um, this is how we learn. I'm looking forward to seeing where I go with this.